My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you a repair, specifically on the iPhone SE 2020. This is a phone that has a very common failure and that is when the touch stops working. The concept of the solution is fairly simple, but the execution is quite difficult. Let me show you what it takes. Let's get into the video. We've got an iPhone SE 2020 that has no touch. This is a fairly common issue that we're seeing plenty of on this model where everything works except touch. Let me show you what's wrong with it and how we fix it. So here in our JC drawing software, we're gonna go look at this pin right here because when I read it with a multimeter, it's pin number eight, I'm not getting a reading, it's open line. And it should be connected here to the CPU. You can see it rolls right here alongside of these other two. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right here, open line. Yeah, we should be getting 0.3 something, and we're not. Slice through this heat sticker, add some isopropyl alcohol, and peel off the protective sponge mesh. Take my hot air rework station, and we're going to remove the shield that covers up the CPU. Just like that. Right out from the corner here is where we're going to kind of try to cut. We're going to cut like a little like rectangle right here. I'm going to come in with a really sharp uh, razor blade. It's kind of like a scalpel here. And we're going to score the ground plane. Just kind of cutting across the top. I'm not going digging deep into the board. I'm just really more or less creating a mark where the ground plane will peel away from. We'll scrape right there, and then I'm going to turn the, and then I'm going to turn the board sideways. Now I'm going to carefully score it, right about here, and get through that little rounding pad until I see some copper like that, and then we'll go right here as well, doing the same thing. And now I'll take the edge, and we're just going to try to peel up. Gonna peel off this top ground plane layer. Once you get under it, it kind of breaks off in bigger chunks. Kind of to get it to come all off in one piece almost. Just like that. Now down inside here, we've got a couple traces that you can see. This big one here, you got one, two, and three little ones right here. And we need to get this innermost one right here. So I'm going to carefully take my razor blade, scrape at it. Isopropyl alcohol helps really kind of clarify so we can see kind of what we're doing. I only want to expose that first trace. Basically what's happened is this line has broken under the SIM card tray somehow. And it's a very common failure on this model. So there you can kind of see it start to pop through. And as you carefully go deeper and deeper and deeper, eventually you'll start to see the trays kind of poke through. It's definitely crucial that you take your time, make sure you don't accidentally cut through it. Here you can kind of see it starting to appear right here, which means I'm really close. I just don't want to touch the other one, so there we go. Nice and exposed. I'm going to clean her out off the area so that we can tin it. Here off to the side, I'm going to prep the, the end of my jumper wire. Put some solder paste down there, get back into focus, and let's tin up the trace there gently. Just like that. Add some flux. And let's solder our jumper onto it and get it to stick. Just like that. Let's remove any excess by just kind of wiggling it off until it breaks. Let's clean it up. Gently. Don't want to break that joint. And we'll add some UV mask so that we can solidify it in place. Cure it with a UV light. 
And there we go. Run the jumper along the edge of the board here. Under the SIM tray. Around the battery connector. And here you can see, just double check, got the eighth one who's just going to come out to this side of the capacitor here, right, right there. So I've cleared away the underfill. I'll put down some solder paste. Get that pre-tinned. Make our job a lot easier. Add some flux. Now we can take our iron, holding with some tweezers, and we can burn through the coating that's protecting the this jumper and solder it to that side of the capacitor like that. I come in with a blade and cut off the excess. Just like that. We'll clean it up with a brush. Getting rid of all of the flux. Let's just test it real quick. Everything looks good, so let's add some UV mask. And cure it in place. I'm going to also add some right here to kind of hold it there. Now I'm going to come and clip off this section of the shield, or in this case I'm actually just going to bend it. Not only will it, yeah, that actually looks really good and protects it. You almost can't even see the wire because it's so kind of hidden. You can see how small it is. It's very thin, but it's definitely going to do its job and it's definitely going to stay in place. There's another set of repairs that run along the same line, literally, where there's a three minute boot loop. And there's those other two lines that you saw in the video. Running jumpers to them is a, little, is a little easier because there are components that you can solder to without having to scrape away at layers of the board. So here you can see the phone's now booting up. I'm going to hit start and we're going to see how long it takes for this phone to uh, boot loop. I've already seen that the boot loop somewhere between the three and four minute mark, which uh, is what you're going to hear about your three minute boot loop. boot loop. And here we go. We're just across the four minutes and there we go. It's uh, powered off, and now it's coming back on. So with the three minute boot loop, what it most likely comes down to is because these lines run the same length, most likely what's happened to one is gonna happen to the other two. If we test here on this pin, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on this eight pin on the charge port, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so basically seven and eight, they run together. And what you'll see is they come over here. One's on this resistor before it dives under to the CPU. And the other is on this resistor right here. So let's go take a look at the connector here. I'm gonna take my multimeter in continuity mode. And we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On seven, I have a reading, 0.3 consistent and on 8 I have OL. So 7 is good but 8 says it's open line and it just so happens to be the one right next to it. So whatever happened to our touch line happened to this line and is most likely going to happen to the other. So we're going to run both jumpers just to prevent anything from happening in the future. So the first one we need to run goes all the way up to this second resistor here. So let's do that. So here we've got this cap and then we've got this resistor here there's that capacitor and then here's this resistor and we're needing to tie into the lower section so right here add some flux to that tin it a little bit and we'll come down here so we need to go pin eight one two three four five six seven eight and straight out from pin eight is this side of the capacitor that we're going to tie into all right we're going to come in here with some flux a little bit of solder just like that we're going to take our wire we're going to tie it in to the end here that's on there but it's not as solid as i want it to be I like that. There's a little brush so you can see it better. Now we'll take a little bit of UV mask. Nothing crazy. 
Straighten out that jumper there, and then we'll cure it with UV light. Now we'll follow this jumper wire. We're going to take it under a sim tray here. Just over and line up with the edge of the CPU right up there, right where it needs to go. Now we'll zoom in down on in there so we can tack this guy in place. Now we don't want it touching the other one because that end did get kind of tinned and I, and I can see it kind of wanting to touch the one next to it. So what we're going to do real quick is just give it a nice little brush. That's far enough away from it that it won't touch it. Now I just need to add some UV mask. And we'll come in and cure it with our UV light. All right, that's cured in place. Now let's go and test it just to make sure we're actually getting the reading still. Getting about 0.3 or so, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Reading 0 0.3, 8, 0.3, yep. So we're good now on both of these, but my fear is that just like the other two lines have gone bad, that this one will. So just to prolong the life of this device, I'm going to add that jumper. There we go. We'll solder it in place. Add some UV mask and let's cure it. And for comparison to how thick this wire is, here's one of my beard hairs. You can see how much thicker it is than the than the diameter of this wire. So this wire is really, really tiny. 0 0.01 millimeters. It's insulated as well if I haven't mentioned that, which allows it to be able to be a jumper wire so that you can have it go all over the board and not damage any, you're not short out anything. You have to scrape at it a little bit to... to... So let's remind ourselves. Pin number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Rows up to this resistor and we can count one, two, three, four, five. It's the sixth one, the bottom of it. And that's all it takes. So the last thing that I like to do is just make sure that the lines are still good and that, that there's also no bridging between them. So what we'll do is we'll count down the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're getting point three, three. Then what I'll do as well is we're gonna just check and see if they're shorted together. Get no reading when I put them together like this. You can see how close I have to get. Oh yeah, there's no shorting there. We're gonna come back to the original one. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to test that against the other pins. And we're not getting any shorting on the other ones. So yeah. now we should not have a boot loop. Let's just put back the shield. The wire's out of the way of the shield, so it won't come in contact. It's secure. We should be good. You can, you can almost not even tell that there are three jumpers running there along the side. They're completely protected under the shield on the top half. So let's gently put it back inside the housing. Let's reconnect everything back up. Connect up the proximity sensor assembly. Connect the display, battery. And then let's turn this guy on. The battery's pretty dead, so we'll do that. 
that still works, which is good. And we're going to hit the timer and we're going to let this run and see if it boot loops. And we'll go to about five minutes. If it hasn't boot looped by five minutes, then we know it's good because it boot looped between the three and four minute mark or maybe like just around four minutes. So as long as we get to five, we should be good. All right, so yeah, we've made it past five minutes. No issues, we still have the touch. Everything seems to be working just fine. That's the solution for when you have no touch and especially if you run into the boot loop like I did on this particular phone. Let me know in the comments below or if there's something else you'd like to see in a future video. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.